Good morning, everybody. You're very welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's great to be back after a very busy Christmas period. Um, didn't drink too much, didn't eat too much, but just been a lot of traveling, a lot of coming and going, and I'm not done yet. Big, big birthday party to go to this evening. My grandmother turns 100, so we're driving off to um, County Mead tonight to um, have a little bit of a get together, family get together, a bit of celebration for my grandmother, who is uh, 100 today. Uh, so I'd just like to wish her a happy birthday and I suppose when you look at all the machines and tractors and everything that we've been talking about over the last uh, few months, she's lived through the design, the manufacture and the demise of every single one of them, which is uh, it's incredible to think about. Um, so yeah, thank, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Um, I've got some fantastic videos coming up in 2024. Um, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment anything at all good bad or indifferent if you've anything you want to add to that and add into the comments it's great i love sitting down and reading through them and getting back to as many people as possible so uh yeah this video i'm going to be taking later on in the video i'm going to be taking a quick look an introduction into the chamberlain tractors uh chamberlain company and uh, moving on to the chamberlain tractors um uh, down in australia so anybody just down under will have great interest in this um I'm going to do this. I'm going to do Chamberlain in, in I think, a three part series. So I'll do an introduction today into the company, how they got set up in the tractor end of things, um, a little bit about the factory and stuff. Um, I'm going to do another video then about a few of the models in between some of the, the iconic models that they produced. And I will do a shorter video then towards the end on um, Under the Demise, their takeover by John Deere and the, the unfortunate demise um, in the 80s of the Chamberlain tractors. So yeah, just to start off with uh, for 2024. So we've got a lot coming up for 2024. So I'm going to I've, I've spoken to most of you already. Anyone that has watched previously knows. Um, so I've got um, a feature video, a special video coming up on Harry Ferguson himself. So I'm in the process of getting everything together for that and cross reference on all the material just to make sure that I have have all the correct details. Um, I'm going to do uh, I have a, another video coming up on the Ferguson series. So the next in the Ferguson series, the 35 and the 65, that will be the next one based on the Ferguson tractors. So 35 and 65. I Then I'm doing a feature length one on the 100 series. So I'm going to do it all in the one. It's going to be an hour, an hour and a half long. I've got um, owners to go out and visit and talk to um, I've got three owners lined up uh, to go out and chat to about the tractors, uh, see them working, um, and a couple that have been on the farm since they were new. Um, so that's going to be fantastic. I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, probably one of my favorite uh, series of tractors, as everybody knows. Um, I then I have a, a special on the, the Fast Track, so the JCB Fast Track episode, and I will be doing a visit with uh, input from one of the countries, so that's Ireland, one of the country's leading um, independent fast track experts to talk us through the history of the fast track, the different models, the good, the bad, and the uh, indifferent on, on, on the fast track series. Um, and I also will be talking to the owner of um, an international uh, 674. So it's a one owner from you, international 674. So also uh, anyone that's into their internationals or cases and that, that's going to be a, a super little video. Um, I also have a video chat, a chat lined up with um, a recently retired Massey Ferguson mechanic who is, he was a mechanic for 50 years in Massey Ferguson dealerships throughout Ireland um, to talk primarily about the evolution of the 3000 series, but I'm sure we'll get on to other things as well. So someone like that that has spent 50 years on one model who are one make who will know them inside out that's going to be it's going to be fantastic to talk to somebody like that um so i'm really looking forward to that as well that'll be probably february time something around that and i also have dealer visits and interviews and chats lined up with um a few dealers to talk about uh, new products that have, have come online for 2024 so as well as the old we'll be dealing with the new but for today we're going back to the 1940s again i'm going to have a quick chat a quick introduction on the Chamberlain Tractor Company. So Chamberlain, yeah, Chamberlain, the, the company itself, was initially uh, a Melbourne-based engineering company. So there was uh, Bert, Albert was the, was the father. There was three sons, um, Bob, Bill, and another Albert, Bert himself. 
Um, and they were all engineers. They were fantastic engineers, mechanics and engineers. And in the Melbourne area uh, throughout the 1930s, they had built a reputation um, in manufacturing parts for, for automotive, for the automotive industry. So for cars and, and, and the like, uh, trains, I think they done some stuff for trains and that as well. Um, but it was their, their, um, their plans to build a tractor specifically for the Australian environment. So anyone that knows Australia knows it's huge. Um, fields, the, the, the wheat production in Australia through the wheat belt, massive areas. So they wanted to produce something that was suitable for the Australian climate, for the Australian land, um, something big, something heavy, something powerful that could pull a wide uh, implement um, carrying out tillage, tillage works and that across the, the wheat belts, so into Western Australia and, you know, I suppose the sugarcane fields in Queensland and, and, and places like that. Uh, something specific to Australia, all Australian built, all Australian made. And um, plans were drawn up for their first model, which was the 40K. So the 40K was, uh, I think it was about 45 horsepower kerosene engine. Um, it was six liter twin cylinder, so three liters per cylinder. And it was horizontally opposed, so like a flat engine. So one piston goes that way, one piston goes that way, kind of like your boxer engines, your Subaru engines and stuff like that. Um, so they had drawn up plans to develop this tractor. And they made initially they made prototypes, and it was the Western Australian government actually who recognised yeah this thing this thing has legs. So they went to the Chamberlain Company um, and they basically offered them a deal to come to Western Australia, come to Perth to build their tractor, and that the Western Australia government would part fund them in their in their um, the development and the design and the production of. The first model, the 40k model. So again, we're going back uh, post war. So the war had just finished. World War Two was just was just over, um, and you know, unlike not like sorry, not like England or sorry, like England uh, and many other places across the world, uh, countries and that were trying to get industry back on its feet, trying to get things back together. Uh, agriculture was one of the biggest things. Um, and there was dormant factories <clears throat> lying across countries now that had been previously making aircrafts and, and whatnot that we spoke about before. But this particular factory <clears throat> in Welchpool in Perth, so anyone that knows Perth, I've lived in Perth for uh, three or four months in Western Australia, beautiful part of the world. Uh, Welchpool is just south of Perth International Airport. So today, Welch, Welchpool is basically just one big industrial estate Um so you'd have lots of suppliers of car parts and uh, caterpillar um, plant um, mining equipment, anything got to do with engineering, um, anything like that, you'll find in the Welsh Pool area. So strategically located, close to the airport, or getting parts in and out and getting them distributed across the country or vice versa. So um, the particular factory that uh, the Western Australian government um was proposing to to Chamberlain was in was in Welshpool. It was a former munitions factory, so they built munitions uh, for the war that would have been used in the Pacific Theater or war to fight, I suppose, the Japanese and that, um, which would have been pretty much on their doorstep when you look at where Australia is in relation to Japan. Um, so munitions would have been made there, put onto a plane at the airport, flown out to where they needed to go. Um, so here we had this huge factory lying dormant. Uh, the Western Australian government wanted to get industry back into it. I, I assume there still would have been plenty of engineering equipment. Uh, production lines and stuff were still there, so it was ready to go. Um, <clears throat> so in 1949, yeah, Chamberlain uh, had set up. They'd set up the foundry. They had got the tooling, the machining that they needed. Uh, they had gotten working, and in 1949, the first tractor, the first 40K tractor, rolled off the production line in Welchpool. So the site, the site of the um, of the Chamberlain factory in Welchpool is actually, the site is still there, the building is still there. Uh, today, I think there's a company in it called West Track. So they are a, a Caterpillar de- uh, agency. Uh, so they supply Caterpillars to, um, to the mining and plant industries across Australia um, and supply spare parts and, you know, repairs and stuff. So uh, that factory, that building is still there. You can go and see it uh, just south of Perth International Airport. 
just a little bit of a side note. I noticed people watching this who are into their aviation, um, into their aircraft and such, uh, as I am. Um, so anyone that knows the, the Hawker Aircraft Company, so Harry Hawker was, um, he was an Australian, uh, he was a pilot and he was an engineer. He developed the, um, the Hawker Aircraft Company. So he was actually a brother-in-law of Bert, um, Bert Chamberlain. So the two families were, the two families are related. Um, Hawker, of course, went on to become one of the largest aircraft manufacturers in the world. Um, so they would have made a lot of, um, fighter jets and stuff like that, private jets, then uh, Hawker Siddeley became, the Hawker Aircraft Company became the Hawker Siddeley um, and there was various amalgamations with, it, with different uh, different companies throughout the years. Um, so it's just interesting the two companies uh, uh, were, were married into each other. Um, Albert Chamberlain was married to Harry Hawker's sister, I believe. So that's the introduction to the company um, without getting too far in, into too much detail. So, um, yeah, it was well set up in Western Australia um, for supplying, you know, primarily, uh, primarily Australia. Um, they weren't exporting at the time. None later on in, I think, into the 1960s um, when they started exporting. Um, the models in between then, there was a few very, very interesting models um, that they had developed. The, the champion diesel and the famous tail end Charlie um, that was actually competed in rallies and stuff. Um, now, I will talk more about these um, these tractors, these machines in in the separate video. So I'm going to do another video about the uh, about the, the the tractors that they have produced in between. Um, the 1950s, then they got into building uh, disc plows, scarifier, stuff like that. So big, wide discs, disc plows for for tilling the land. The big Australian prairies, the wheat belt uh, land. Um, there's some fantastic videos up on YouTube if anybody wants to go and look. And I know there is a lot of these uh, disc plows that are still actually in use today. They're still on farms. They were so well built that they're still being used. Um, and the bearing system and stuff that they used and the Timken bearings that they used were, were top quality at the time. And they needed to be, you know, if you're out in the middle of the Australian desert or whatever, wherever you are the, in the wheat belt, um, you really can't afford to have stuff breaking down. So stuff had to be really, really well built. It had to be durable and it had to be able to go up and down fields for weeks at a time without giving any trouble. You know, it doesn't really happen these days, I'm afraid. So I'm going to talk about those tractors. Um, and there was a concept tractor then, the light tractor that they made or they, they put into into design or designing um, to rival the 35. So a smaller tractor to rival the Ferguson 35. Uh, Funny looking tractor had a few quirks about it. It was built around a, a holding engine, so a holding engine out of, a, out of a car. This tractor was built around it, um, but it never went into production for some reason. Something that we'll talk about in the future. So that's really all I'm going to talk about today on Chamberland. Not much, but it's an introduction into who they are. Um, an interesting company, actually. Yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, they made a lot of iconic tractors in between. Um, in between their start and their finally their demise having been bought out by John Deere um into the 70s and completely taken over in the 80s um and it's a shame because um you know, they did get into financial difficulties and there was various reasons for that um you know with the with the import of foreigners <laughs> you know your David Browns and your Fergusons and that that were starting to flood the Australian market at the time um uh, the pressure was on. Uh, the pressure was on on um, Chamberlain, and and John Deere bought them out. They bought a share in them. They bought a twenty percent share in them, and then or for, sorry, a forty nine percent share in them, and they eventually ended up buying them out, and production in Australia ceased. But we will talk more about that down in the next week or two. So that's it. Yeah, I am under time pressure this weekend, so just a short video. I'm going to split it up into three, as I said. Um, I will the next video will have a lot more detail on the tractors themselves and the different models specifications, what they were used for, where they were used, um, what people liked about them, what they didn't like about them. So if there's anybody in the comments, anybody watching from Australia, anyone that had them, drugged them, still has them, uh, please drop a comment if there's anything you think uh, would be interesting for my next video. Um, I will be make, putting that together within the next week or so. Um, I'm going to roll this Chamberlain one off pretty quickly. Um, so if there's anything you need to know, if anything you liked about them, disliked about them, if, you know, any quirks, anything, that I should know, uh, please let me know because it is sometimes it is very hard to find information. Um, I'd like to thank the people at um, 
Victoria Museum for sending me on the information that I do have because there was again a lot of conflicting information online and there was some people saying that Bob was the boss of the company and some were saying Bert was the boss of the company and it was very hard to pin down exactly the uh, the correct details so actually the Museum of Victoria um, supplied me with some fantastic information so uh, that's it yeah please like subscribe comment if you want to see the next video if you want to see the list of videos that I've seen that we have coming up for January and February um we will be pushing on we will be getting out of the shed out of the house out on the farms out in the fields to, to see machinery working and to get talking to people about them um so if you like it please um please give us a little bit of support and happy new year to everybody um have a safe and healthy 2024 and i'll talk to you in the next few days thanks